Hello, I'm David Wormsey. In this video, I wanted to share how I would go about creating price lists and business hours in Beaver Builder. And here I'm just using the HTML module and some basic code that I think even a beginner will find simple to adjust, perhaps easier than if a module had been created for it. This should work on any version of Beaver Builder. I'm going to be using the light version myself in this example. Let me show you a page so you get an idea of what we are trying to do. So this comes up quite regularly and it's not there as an available module module and it's a really simple thing and it doesn't need something complex like tables or a complex module just a little bit of CSS so very often someone will need some kind of pricing table here we've got a kind of menu for a hairdresser and the same thing could be needed for opening hours here on this case I've just got some background styling which is there through the Beaver Builder column template. So a lunch menu that might be quite common, slightly styled different. And a version of this code here, just cut down a little bit, can be used for business agenda where you've got something lined up on the left here like times which are uneven and you want things to be presented against them in an even fashion. And of course, you wanna make sure that all of these things work responsively, which this bit of code will do. We're just floating items to the left and the right with it. So kind of works the way that you need it to. So before I move on to showing you how to do this, I should explain this is part of the Beaver Junction project, which I announced a couple of videos ago, which is a little bit hard to explain the concept because it's something new that I've got out. But the idea is that I'm going to create these videos as I go on, things that I've learned and challenges that I'm making for myself. I'm no expert coder and I'm putting it out there for anybody in the community to pick up on the code and see if they can do it better and communicate or add to it as well. But the idea is that I'll present these inner plugin as working examples, which you can just drag in to your designs. Let me go over to the home page because it's gone. I've got an example here. And then you can just use them. And this is going to be handy for me. I can have them in all of my projects, drag them in, and then I can adjust the code. And then for me, I want to put that code into a central place, which I'll talk about in a moment. But also for these videos, I didn't want them to be someone who wants to install this plugin all the time and update it. So you can just take the content I've got for each of the instruction videos and do it yourself, really. So if I go over to the templates here, you'll see I've got the status on these templates, which I've already released, but I'm tidying them up as I go along. So the one we're looking at today is in progress. And when I finish this video, it will be complete so we can click into here and look, or we can just look at the example I've shown you. I will just mention here that I'm adding a last updated, which is today. This is the US format that I'm using because I know most people are from the States who watch my videos. And um, it won't be updated if you, were, if you took the plugin from earlier. You can go to the same place, the same link. I'm not version controlling at this early stage, so I just update there and it's available for all. But you could just grab the code and update it because that's the idea. It's just bits of code, really, that I'm sharing. So let me just go back and we go full circle over here. So I've got this stuff which shows you where to find it if you're using the plugin and where my video will go and some notes, but also the code is there with the notes on it if you don't want to use the plugin. Okay, right, I better get on with what I'm supposed to show you today. So here I've got a demo site here where I'm using the light version of Beaver Builder and I'm already in the editor. I've got my plugin installed and also the extra plugin that's needed by the Beaver Builder team that adds uh, a place for CSS and JavaScript. So let me go in. This was a row template, so you find it under rows and under custom rows because that's what I've called it. And what we'll do is we'll find the price list here and you need to drag that into its own row. And from here, then we can just grab because it's all in the individual modules here. So we could just grab those or if you want, you can just go and take the whole column if you want the styling that goes with that and move that and then delete the whole row. You're good. The uh, CSS is already in there. So that's all we really need to do with this. What I've decided to do here is to put a lot of comments on to the first example that isn't there on the rest. So it looks a little bit messy over here, but I'll show you it. But let's imagine you just, you don't want to move the code to somewhere else and you just want to use it as it is. Then if you just go and click into here 
and go into the general tab which you probably go to straight away you'll see here is the markup so what we've got here is an unordered list we can tell that with the code there because that starts there and it ends here because we've got the forward slash and in there we've got some list items which these are that's the li here and within each of these we've got span so the content on the left here the long hair here is in a span which closes here and then we've got another span for the price over here and then it closes out the list item so without needing to know any code if you want to add some more list items you can just add or delete i'm just going to add another one in here and you'll see because it shows you in a blue here that we can just change our dark content here and let me just put in something else bold and i don't think we can charge for bold so we'll put in free and there we are we can see it in live time and then we can just save out that module and that's maybe all that you want to do but you might want to do some extra styling with it if you do then I'm going to work through what I've made a little bit more complex but it might be useful you don't need to know all this information so I've got some notes here just incidentally I'll cover this if you didn't know where if you put uh, anywhere where you can put the CSS in if you put comments in it will strip those out of the code automatically so when Beaver Builder compiles its page with all the modules that you're using here it puts it all into one file and serves that up so it cleans all of that up and in fact this is probably uh, not something so relevant to most people I can just show you how this kind of works I'm on the actual example page that I have on a separate site not the one that I'm just using here but I use a an editor called stylizer but it's very easy to kind of see what is happening so if I just take any let's just go over here and I click on this it's very good because it tells me what's happening so I can see in my layout CSS for this particular page I think all of this is something to do with my caching but we, it automatically generates it to the bottom of that file it will add in our custom stuff and what it does is it gives it its own identifier which it does for all of the modules that you drop in so there isn't anything covering the same will be the same as that that module there all the rules that are applying so that's how it works if you didn't know so it's quite easy to find it even if you leave your um, CSS directly in a page if you've got a tool like this you can kind of find it and you could overwrite this CSS but it'd probably be simpler just to take the CSS out okay let's explain this bit of code here and first I can see this has already gone a little off so I'm just going to save this again there we're back let's go into this slot here so we've got a style that's been applied to the list item so we've got this here now we need one of those styles here this isn't needed the color I've put it there I put it to inherit because we're using the theme color but should I want to style the values of the list items themselves then I can just go in here and let's just put it in red to make it easy and as you can see all the text has turned to red there I won't need this so I'm just going to get rid of it and we've got padding here and for those not familiar with CSS I'm just trying to explain things as we go along here there's two values against padding here so when we're doing this it's a sort of short code if you like shortcut to it so the when there's two values the first value is talking about the top and the bottom so we've got top and bottom padding for each of our list items that's separating them out and for left and right we've got none then we needed this list style none now what happens with a list item the browsers whatever browser you're using adds in a little bullet point next to it and adds in a little bit of space that's just the way that browsers work so we had to compensate and turn that list style to none to stop that showing and then I put a bit of margin left on all of these to move it to compensate for that space where the bullet point was so you might need to adjust this value over there okay so that's a bit of basic styling on that then we come to separating these two items that are in the span tags so we want the first one the first span which we called first child we're using this here to identify it and we're floating this one to the left so that's why it's over there and what we're doing here there's a bit of padding again and we're using four values in this case this is really just so I can just point out how CSS works so when it's working this way we're starting 
from the top working clockwise. So we top and then it's right and then left and then bottom. So we know that this is right and we've got padding of 10. And what this is doing is it's adding this little bit of space over here. Let me just go and put it to something a bit bigger so you can see, there we are, just moved. I'm just gonna put that back to 10. So it's just creating that where this line is, which we'll move on to a moment and then in a moment, and then we'll move to this one. Now, interestingly, a bit of a confession, I probably stole this code from somewhere, but I don't know where, because I'm looking at this and I don't think this is needed. So we've got the first child identified and we're styling that and floating it to the left. And then we've got the next one, which is our price, the next span tag. And it's floating to the right to keep it to the right and keep it all moving responsively. And again, as you can see here with the padding, we go top, right, bottom, left. So this is adding equally a bit of space here. Hope that makes sense. I think this isn't probably needed. This is a bit more complex. So we're, we're selecting that it's the first child plus the span. So it's the span left over that this is identifying. But I guess if we just removed this, I'm going to leave it in because there might be a good reason for why it was there. Um, but, you know, it should do the same because it's the remaining span that we want to float right. OK, and then finally, and we may not need this on all examples, we've got the line. Now, we don't have a line in our markup. And what we've got is another technique, which is the after. There's also before, which is a pseudo element. So we can select our list item and then after it, we can put in some content. So it's stuff that isn't in the markup that we can add via CSS. And in fact, we're not adding any content. We're just showing that we want some content to go there. We're putting it as nothing there. In fact, if I put something in, you'll just, oh, you can't really see it there because I've got this overflow on here hidden so it doesn't creep outside of the element. But maybe if I put a D, you can see the top of it. Well, you can see it's there. Uh, let me just go back to that. And that's it. And we've given also this after a bit of height as well. So you can adjust this maybe to get the line to the position that you want. You could probably do it with line height as well, but I've just done it with height there. And we've got this as block, so it's taking up the whole area of the row of the element. That's what that's meaning. And here's the real styling that we've got is the one pixel solid with this color. So again, I could go and change the color. I'm going to change that to red. And I've got this and I could also pick as I put them over here. Let's just go and copy and paste this and we can have a dotted. There we are. And we can just change that if we wanted that a bit bigger, which I've done on the others. There we are. So we can change all that styling. Now, there is one thing just to mention on this that we have this um, class signified by this dot of FL dash module dash content. So FL is fast line. That's Beaver Builder. That's the, the name of their company. And everything that's Beaver Builder it comes with this. Now we wanted this because we want this rule, this extra content that doesn't exist on the page to only apply to module content. Because if I remove this, this might be a handy tip if you've come across this before. I certainly have. I'm sure I've done videos where I haven't tidied this up. So if I go and just save this now. And if we go over to, you see, <laughs> with the, a styling has taken over because I haven't said just make that work only in that particular module. So I'm going to pop that back in so we don't get that no annoying thing again. So a uh, useful little trick that we can use everywhere. So that's it. That's pretty much the CSS and how that works, really. Um, what I'll do is I'll just go down to this example, but it's pretty self-evident. It's the same kind of thing. We didn't need to float anything to the right. And all we need to do now is we're, we're floating both of these things effectively are going to the left. The first child is... Uh, stated to the left, but the other one will naturally go there. And what I'm doing here is really just creating the distance between these two with this width that I'm setting for the first span here. So if I wanted a bit more space, I could just go and, and move that along a bit further. And that's it. And the rest is just extra things that you could add in as you need it. But that's a much more simplified thing. And somehow I seem to have messed that up. There we go. Right. I think... That's all I need to do on this. 
Let's just talk about moving something out of this. So, you know, if it's a one-off, it's maybe not such a big deal to keep the CSS uh, in the module itself, except if you forget that you did that and then you're looking for things. Now, I find it easy to identify, but it might be better to just work with putting your CSS all in one place. It's a pretty easy thing to do. Let's just, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, this whole column and put it in a new row. And then I'm going to get rid of this row that we don't need any longer. Okay, we've got it. And then I shall go into here. Now what I can do is either on the page on Beaver Junction, I can go and copy the content from there and, and paste it into my style sheet. And it's going to work, but I'm going to need to reference it once I've moved it out of here. So what I'm going to do is just show you. So I'm going to take away all of this code and we'll save it. And you can see there we are. Our bullet points have come back and there's none of the styling. Everything's collapsed together. But I have earlier prepared this. So what I've done is I've taken the content that was there and I've put this in this case in my child themes styles.css file. I've put that code in there. I could put it in the customizer or wherever you think, but that's what I've done. But it's not working on it at the moment because I haven't referenced it. So, but what I have done is I've done that already. I've added in dot menu to the code. So I've added this here and you'll be able to do this with most examples that I'm going to show. So now if I go into my module, and I go down to the class. Now I shouldn't put the dot in and I put, let's just see, will it work in live time? I'm going to put men you in. Ha ha, there we are. And just save that. And now it means that really any time I want that CSS anywhere, I just need to put in menu into the class selector under advanced and it's gonna show up. Okay, I hope this was useful. It was a bit longer than I expected, probably a little bit rambly. But if you did like this video, then uh, please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. Okay, thanks very much. I hope to see you in another video. Bye-bye.